stacking multi-night sessions in Cyril has always been tough, until now. Today I'm introducing my latest Cyril script that makes multi-night and multi-panel mosaic processing super simple in Cyril. And this will work with no matter what telescope you use, what camera you use, or what capture software you use. So whether you're using Nina, ASI Air, SGP, ECOS, or even a smart telescope such as a Seastar or a Dwarf 3, this script will work for you. If you use any of the mentioned capture software, then you can use this to make a mosaic of pretty much any size. And in this video, I'll show you a demo example where I stacked a six session two panel mosaic of the Veil Nebula. If your images cannot play solve, like you captured it with an old DSLR system, this will also work. But mosaics or automatic mosaics stitching will not work because those images can be easily plate solved. So this script will do a global star alignment, which is just a basic serial stacking process. Now, if you're using a smart telescope and you have thousands of images, I would recommend you check out my other script instead, my smart telescope pre-processing script, because this script still has a 2048 file limit for Windows. So all of your light sessions combined, whether you have one session or a hundred sessions, the total lights frames cannot exceed 2048 on Windows. But if you have a Mac or a Linux, go wild. You can use software like Cyrillic to do multi-night stacking, but that doesn't fully support the latest version of Cyril, so I'm hoping to fill some of the gaps. And with that said, a big shout out to everyone who's helped beta test this over the last few weeks. Without you, this script would be full of bugs and it would not be as functional as it is today, so thank you. If you like early access to updates and future scripts, check out our Discord server. The invite link is in the description below. You can request to become a beta tester. Or if you like what I'm doing, consider supporting me on Patreon. Link is in the description. There is a free tier and I do open up my beta testing for free users there as well. And of course, subscribe to this channel to stay up to date. One last thing before we dive into the demo is I recommend watching this whole video because I cover a lot of the most common questions that people may have and it'll end up saving you time if you get stuck. To get the new script, head on over to my GitHub repository called Serial Scripts. Link is in the description, and you want to click on Nastronomy OSC PP.py, and then click on the download button on the top right hand side of the script. And then we'll head on over to Serial. If you want to know where to put it, you click on the menu, Get Scripts. And under the script section on the left hand side, you see a list of storage directories. So you can put your script anywhere in these directories. I put mine in a C star mosaic 1.4 because I'm putting all of my custom scripts in there for now under a directory called Cyril scripts. In the very near future, when this script is merged into Cyril, you'll see it under the pre-processing section, probably a little over my other Nastronomy Smart Telescope script. So you'll see Nastronomy OSCPP.py here. You check the box, you click apply, and it'll automatically download for you and keep you up to date. But until that happens, you put it in one of these directories. And then to access it, you go to scripts, Python scripts, once it's officially involved, included or included in Cyril, it'll be under pre-processing and you'll have a script here called Nastronomy OSC.pp or pp.py. But for now, it'll be under whatever directory you put it under. For me, it's Cyril scripts. For you, it could be something else. And it's here. So I'll click on this. We'll run it and we'll see what the script looks like. And here we go. So let's continue. All right, so once you start the script, this is the user interface that you get. We get the current working directory up here on top so that you know you're in the right session or in the right place. And then we have two tabs here, a files tab and a processing tab. The files tab is also a session manager where you can create and remove sessions as you please. We have some frame addition buttons and a frame files manager here that we'll look at really soon. So sessions here, you always have a default session of one. You can't remove the default session, so it'll say it cannot remove the last session if you try to. And you can add as many sessions as you want. So I added seven here and they are all up here. You can add as many sessions as you want. So you can also remove as many sessions as you want. You just can't remove the last session. Down here we have, we can add lights, darks, flats, and biases. There's also a tooltip on biases that says that you can use dark flats instead of bias frames, which is what I use. Just to test some, test some of these buttons here. So I'll go to lights, I'll add some light frames here just to show you what I mean. This isn't the best UI here since the file selector here is a little bit outdated. I'll try and update that in a future version, but for now, this is what we have. And the display here only has the file number, the type of file, and where the location of the file is. 
If you think you made a mistake with adding a file, you can select a file, you can click on remove selected file, it'll give you a warning. You can also select multiple by holding control and clicking some of these. You can also click and hold shift to select a range. You can also click and drag and select. So that kind of, kind of intuitive, I think. You can also click on reset everything. And once you reset everything, it'll actually reset all of your sessions as well. So if I click and add a couple of sessions here, session one is the only one with data, I click on reset everything. It'll actually reset all the sessions and all of the files. So now let's actually add some data here and see what it looks like. All right, so I went and added all of the files for one single session. So I have my lights here, I have my darks, my flats, and my biases, aka dark flats. Now, if I were to go to processing tab and then click on run, it would process just this single session. But I can also add another session of the exact same panel, or I can go and add lights from a different panel and Cyril will automatically know that this is mosaic and it'll stitch it together. So for example, I added, I just added some lights from panel two. So you can see if I go to session one, it's panel one. And if I go to session two, it's panel two. So if I were to add my darks and flats and biases and process this, it'll stitch them together because they're two different panels. Now I can go and add a third session that's of panel one and a fourth session of panel two and a fifth session of panel three, or sorry, panel one and a sixth session of panel two again. I can keep going and it'll stitch them together really neatly. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add all of those files. I'm not gonna make you sit through while I browse through my directories here. All right, I added six sessions. So session one, three, and five are all panel one. And sessions two, four, and six are all panel two. And this script will process all of those together. It will not process each of these sessions separately. What it'll actually do is it'll calibrate all of these frames and then it'll actually stack all of those calibrated frames at the same time, which is better math wise when we're averaging all of these frames together. And I have six sessions. I actually could go up to 10 sessions because I do have two other nights with the Veil Nebula, but just for the purposes of this demo, I'll stick to six sessions, two panels. Going into the processing tab, we have a couple of filter options here. These are what happens during registration. So we can filter using two different methods. We have the roundness method. So it'll look at the roundness value of the star. So if you have elongated stars, you can actually decrease the value here. This is a sigma value or the standard deviation. So if you have a value of three, it'll pretty much get every frame, which is about 99.76% of frames. If you go down to 2.5, it'll get about 95%. So if you see that, you have a lot of frames and you don't want to sift through all of them and you want to be able to reject some frames with elongated stars. You would come here and you decrease this to 2.5 or even two and make sure that you only have the best frames. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to keep it at three. I'm going to get all the frames. We also have a filter by weighted FWHM, the full width half maximum. This is a new thing in Cyril, I believe. It will weigh the frames at a previous step and then it'll, you can actually filter them out based on uh, the full with half maximum value that Cyril scored these frames with. And that, that's pretty cool. And it's does the exact same filtering values here as well. So it's a sigma value, so standard deviation defaults to three, but you can go down to 2.5 or more. You can go up to all the way up to five, but if you have if you have three, it, that's basically all you, all you need. And in the future, I may actually change this that you can't do more than three because it doesn't really matter. The options here, we have drizzles. This should be familiar if you use my smart telescope script. I also have the you know, suffixes here, which I think helps a little bit more. There's also tooltips for all of these. So if you have questions on what these are, you can find some more information here. You can always contact me through Discord, through Patreon, through YouTube for more with more questions. Now the drizzle factor is a multiplication factor. So if you have a drizzle of 2x, it'll upscale your image by two, but this will also increase the processing time for the script. So if you have a factor of three, it'll take quite a long time. The pixel pixel fraction actually defaults to one, not 0.9. So I'm just gonna put that back. And what I normally do is I'll actually do drizzle factor of one and a pixel fraction of one. This will still help get recover some in detail through the drizzling method. The official serial recommendation is that if you 
increase a drizzle factor by a number, you should divide the pixel fraction by that number. So if you have a drizzle factor of two, you'll actually have a pixel fraction of 0.5. One thing to know about drizzle factor and pixel fraction is that this will also increase the noise that you see. And there's also a chance that you increase the amount of stacking artifacts or processing artifacts that you see. So things that you should really play with. And a lot of the times I'll actually go down to 0.9 pixel fraction. I find find that just making the pixel a little bit smaller, keeping the digital factor one gives me some lost detail that I would have otherwise not have had. If you have any questions about any of these registration settings, let me know. If you want to see other registration options, go on here for a future version. Also, let me know. Now we have some other steps here. Background extraction uses the basic polynomial factor of one. This does help quite a bit for a lot of people, uh, but you don't have to use this. This is an optional optional step. You can also feather frames. I recommend only doing this if you have a mosaic. If you don't have a mosaic, don't check it. But since I am doing a two-panel mosaic, I'm going to click it. And you can create a feather amount. I think 20 is a good, 20 pixels is a good feather amount, but sometimes I'll go all the way up to 50 if I have a large data set of frames that are wonky, as you'll see at the end of this result here. There's also this cleanup files where it'll delete most of the intermediary files. The only thing it will not delete is it will collect all of the pre-processed calibrated lights files and it put them in a directory for you. This was actually a feature requested by Rich from Deep Space Astro who, who believes that you can collect all of these lights and then process them later on. This is especially useful if you have, if you plan on processing or capturing the same target over weeks and months, and maybe years. That way you can only save the pre-processed lights and then process them later on without having to do the whole adding all of these and going through this process from step zero. So I'm not going to check this because I want to show you what the structure looks like, the data structure looks like. And if you have any questions or need help, you click on help here. You'll get a little pop-up here. It'll give you some information here if you click on OK. It also prints to the console so you can copy and paste and find me on YouTube, Discord, and Patreon. If you like what I'm doing here, if you want to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. There's also a free tier that you can join. And you'll notice that once I clicked on serial, the script kind of disappears. So you'll have to check your taskbar. It's probably there. It's most likely there. And once we're here, I'm going to open up my test sesh folder here just to show you what the structure will look like and then I'll click on run and now Cyril is doing its thing. I will mention that Cyril actually copies all of those files over and you can see it created my six session folders and each of these session folders will look very similar. If you have lights, biases, darks, and flats, you'll find the copies of those files here. When you click on cleanup files, these will get deleted as they are processed. Each of these sessions will also get a process folder and here you'll use symlinks whenever it can you'll find your calibrated or your master frames here. The one thing I did forget to mention is that I'm hoping in a future version to allow using master frames instead of you know adding your darks and biases and flats over and over again, or have a way to assign flats, bias, and darks to multiple sessions. That I'll have to figure out how to do that later on. In these session folders here, it'll stop here at PP lights. And then once these are done, it'll actually go back to my test session directory. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And then I'll it creates a new directory called collected lights. And inside collected lights, we have all those PP lights files. So session one all the way to session six, it's still copying those files. Once it's here, it'll create a sequence and then Cyril will register, plate solve, or plates all first and then register, and then it'll stack all these frames all at once. So as I mentioned, it's not stacking a session by itself and then stacking the stacks. It's actually collecting all these lights and stacking them all in one go, which is actually better when it comes to averaging and getting the best out of the detail, best out of your data. So it's copying all these and I'll let it finish and we'll come check on this in a minute. Alrighty, that finished and this is the final result and if I say so myself, it looks really good. And you can see the name of the file that was created. We have the NGC 6960 panel one. So this gets it, its name from the first panel. It stacked 95 frames, which is a little over seven and a half hours, I believe. But you'll have to divide that by two because the first panel here is about 
half of the time and the other half here, the second panel is about half the time. So it adds all of them. And it's 28,500 seconds in total, which I believe it is about seven and a half or eight hours. It also has a drizzle factor here along with the time, exact date time that this image was processed. So you can have multiple versions of this. I also still do the underscore OG. I initially started this script and I also was doing SPCC, but I decided to take that out because not everyone will have similar types of gear and you can do that later on anyway so i may remove that later on in a future version if you have any thoughts on that let me know in the comments below but once we zoom in we can see that the feather amount that i used was actually pretty perfect like i don't see any kind of like stacking artifacts here, any edge artifacts here and you can see that my sessions all of them weren't really always you know perfect but this did a really nice job of putting everything together so the next steps here would be to crop this in a way that gets both of these this entire nebula complex and start processing them which is not a part of this video Another feature update that I hope to do is to make sure that you can save these sessions so that if you have to restart serial later on, you're not adding six sessions over and over again. So for now, to mitigate that, once the script is completed, this does not close, so it'll still be here, so you'll have to close it manually. And that's to give you the opportunity if you want to add more frames or if you want to add another session, you'll remove a session because one of these sessions is bad, you can do that and then reprocess it all over again. If we look at our collected lights directory, we can see that it kept all of these files, but normally when you do cleanup files, the only files that will remain will be all of these files. So from session one PP lights all the way to session six PP lights, whatever your sessions are, but it'll get rid of everything, including more stacked, including the BKG, including the registered frames, etc. We go back to test session. The entire sessions directory will also be deleted. So all of these will get deleted if you do clean up files. And this is what you'll have left with. And that's the new script and that's version 1.0.0. It does make multi-night, multi-panel stacking much easier. Some future improvements I have planned for the script include master frames. The trick right now, if you have master frames, is just add the frame twice in, under whatever calibration setting you're using, and then it'll work. But I'll have a, an update really soon to the script where it'll handle master frames as is. I'll also work on processing dual narrowband data combined with OSC data. Still have to figure out how it's done. I know Cyrillic does this, so I'll have to look there as well and see how it's done so that I can at least replicate the system, if not make it a little bit better or do it in a way that I think makes sense. I'll also probably work on a separate script for monochrome processing. I will look into seeing if I can somehow include that here, but sometimes it's just easier to just start from scratch and do something completely different. Another update would be to save session data so that you don't have to keep going in and adding the files over and over again. To mitigate that this time, after you run the script, the script does not close, it still stays open. So if you need to make modifications, you can without having to re-add all those files. And the last planned update is to figure out a workflow that will pause this whole stacking process to allow you time to cull more bad frames. So this was a suggestion from Rich from Deep Space Astro. So I think I have an idea on how to do that. I just have to get it done. I'm always looking for ideas to improve my existing scripts and work on new ones. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Join Discord, join Patreon, find me all over the internet. And if you use this script, I would love to hear from you, whether it works for you, that would be amazing. And if it doesn't work for you, let me know how I can help. Maybe we can get it started working for you together. Thank you for watching. And until next time, clear skies.